What's up everybody? It is Matt from Electric All Wheel and today we are here again with the Haybike Ranger S and we have added our dual battery kit to this and we got quite a bit of range out of it. We received a lot of questions about adding a 52 volt battery to one of these bikes. So I first want to say that Electric All Wheel always recommends utilizing the factory specs of the bike that you have. The e-bike that you have, utilize those factory specs as a 48 volt battery and 48 volts is what you want to use with this bike. That being said, we are who we are and we are going to add a second 52 volt battery. I'm actually going be to on your left. take it for a ride in this video. I'll show you the install, which will be easy because the installation is going to incorporate what was already there from the other video. So I will leave a link to that video in the description below of this video so that you can see the internal frame installation of the cabling and then the fitment of that inside the bike case phone bag where the balancer stays. Cabling is already set. It's going to be pretty easy for me to put the 52 volt battery onto this bike. I will show you the voltage. I will test the voltage so you know that it's a 52 volt battery, which at full charge is 58.8 volts. And then I'm going to take it for a two mile ride and run it back and then you will see it. I know that the factory battery right now is sitting somewhere around 53 volts and that's a 48 volt battery. It is sitting near fully charged, but not fully charged at 53 volts. One thing I wanna encourage you to do is that if you decide to go dual battery and get this style of range, this kind of range, this extended range, it is in your interest to invest in a suspension seat post. For this bike, it's 30.9 millimeters in diameter. We'll leave a link for a suspension seat post in the description below. You will thank me later. We believe in the Bike Case brand, and the reason why we chose Bike Case is because they test past the Sun Tour standards. So if you want to know more about that, give us a shout via email or reach out to Bike Case himself. Chad is awesome, so check them out. Also, if you like these red chairs behind us, Talk to George, we're gonna leave his phone number in the description below. George hooked us up and these things look great. We love the chairs, not only that, but they're a good offset and accent color piece for the background for all of these videos. If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary. And if you're in the area, check out eBikes of Tampa Bay, Florida. I went down and took a ride with the St. Pete float fleet last night. Thursday, they do their rides every Thursday, and it was amazing. I loved it so much. Took the Aerial Rider Kepler with dual 52 volt batteries. Did that one with the Datex DX2. We love that. So, check out that video. We'll put up some clips of that in shorts for the St. Pete Float Fleet ride right all over downtown St. Pete. It was amazing. And we will get this set up so we can handle a nice mileage, high mileage ride and the high speed rides if we really want to do it. Here we go. All right, 52 volt battery. I'll lay this down in front of you so you can see it. Go ahead and turn that on to voltage. See that there? And then over here, the uh, square side is positive, so I'm going to go ahead and hit that. And then the other side is negative, so I'm going to do that. There you go. 58.8 volts. That is a fully charged 52 volt battery. So fully charged 52 at 58.8 volts, 58.7, 58.8. Oh, now it's not plugged in, so let's check this out. There we go, and factory is reading 53.2 volts. So when we hook up the 52 volt battery, we're gonna put it in right here. This thing will only use the 52 volt battery that we're going to install until the 52 volt battery reaches the 53.2 volts of the 
factory battery in the bike and then they will uniformly discharge to the low voltage cutoff. So you can see I have an XT60 strapped to the side with these tidy helper cable clips. Those are awesome. And then inside here, I have a 40 amp balancer kit that's already hooked up. So check out the video for this factory install with another 48 volt battery. So you can see all the options available. We're good with that. So this is where we're going to plug in. Now, it's important to remember that I'm utilizing the bike case bottle cage strap adapters here. And these strap adapters come with a factory screw that does not fit on this mounting plate. So you're going to have to get a couple of aftermarket screws. We'll leave a link for them so that the battery will slide over this plate. The factory screw is used on this rear one and only one of them is used just to give a nice support and it also supports the bottom of this mount when it's attached to the bike and it helps to hold it as well. These straps are extra thick and they have a slip resistant coating on the inside and then this will mash down for the final fitment which makes it pretty secure. Just gonna go ahead and strap these up. Now I just like to give it one more to make sure it's secure and that's on there. And now I need to make sure it gets plugged in. That's that. So now what we'll do is check out the voltage on the display. And it should read and it does 58.9 volts. So it's just like 0.2 volts off of what we saw from the volt meter. So it's alive. It's reading the second battery. And we know that it's going to pull juice from this battery first, all the way down to that 53.2. And then both of them will work in tandem until the low voltage cutoff of the 52. And then the 48 will finish it off to the low voltage cutoff of the controller. So that's pretty good. We will give you some range calculations at the end of the video, but let's go ahead and take this for a ride. Let's make sure all this is working. I can see the camera, the good, the GPS is on, so you guys will get some of that. That's good. All right. All right, so we're gonna throttle only a couple miles. You'll see the route on the GPS. If it's showing speed accurately.
see here. Voltage is now showing at a standstill 53.1 volts. So that means we just tapped in to the 48 volt, which wasn't fully charged, but this 52 volt battery was. That's awesome. And yes, at the risk of all the Karens and everyone else, I did a high amperage discharge at as much speed as I could. We went way further than a couple of miles, uh, but I did that so I could show you what the possibilities are. We did eight, is it 8.7 miles? We'll confirm that, but I know that to be nearly true uh, because of this distance that I've ridden before for the same test. 52 volt down to battery by case bottle cage strap adapters 40 amp electric all-wheel dual battery discharge balancer kit and the bike case foam bag with the bike case suspension seat post this bike reached 30 miles an hour i was pretty impressed so good for good for them let's go ahead and give this thing a test let me set this up here so you guys can see it when it comes live Set to voltage, flat side is positive. There we go. And it says 53.3, which is about where we were on the factory battery readout on the display. So we're happy with that. We may not have dipped into the factory battery. So let's check on the display and see. So it's showing 53. So it's used 0.2 volts in conjunction, still showing as a full battery. So we know that during that trip, we only use the 52 volt battery. Well, there you have it. We have successfully installed a 52 volt battery onto this bike. It worked out very well. We've tested it. We know it works. We are pretty happy with the bike cage, bottle cage straps. These things make it really easy to mount and dismount one of these batteries, and we like that aspect a lot. The straps are thick enough that you can actually get some nice grip on there, and then it will hold one of these aftermarket batteries, which has some significant weight. There's two. We know that they can hold a nice big bottle of water, so we like that. I know a lot of you stuck around for the range calculation, so let's get to it. We have a second 52 volt, 15 amp hour battery, and then a primary 48 volt, 14.4 amp hour battery. So we're going to do 48 times 14.4. That gives us 691.2. And then we will do 52 times 15, 780 plus 691.2 equals 1,471.2 watt hours. Now we're gonna divide that by 25 and 25 is the microtole constant, which says it's 25 watt hours per mile ridden at 20 miles an hour throttle only. And you get 58.8 miles with the addition of this 52 volt battery. Now, some of you saw that we did a lights out full throttle scenario, high speed, and I did that so you could see a high current discharge and it did get up to around 30 miles an hour. So keep that in mind if that's what you're looking for. However, remember electric all wheel only recommends utilizing the factory select voltage for the Ranger S, which is 48. If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary. And if you're in the area, check out eBikes of Tampa Bay, Florida. Get in that Facebook group, make an event, and go for a ride with your friends. If you're doing the long range rides, again, I stress, suspension seat post. Check it out, description below. We'll talk to you next time.